The 70 My Dash Cam Pro Plus 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 Um uh, only two pluses. Also known as the A500S is a 2K dash cam from ultra budget manufacturer 70 My. In my opinion, this is one of the better dash cams in the sub $100 price range, and we're gonna see why in just a moment. But before you race out to AliExpress and wait six months for this product to show up in your mailbox, there are a couple things to take into consideration and a couple reasons to buy a more premium or advanced dash cam. So here we go. The A500S is a pretty standard wedge-shaped design with a lens, buttons, and a screen. The build quality is far higher than I expected for this price, with the camera being a solid matte feeling plastic. The front facing lens rotates up and down, but not side to side. The buttons on the back have a nice click to them, which suggests that 70 Mai actually thought about how they'd feel. Turning on the camera, we're greeted with both audio and visual prompts, which make setup pretty straightforward. Please format SD card. The large, bright screen makes interacting with the user interface very straightforward as well. All the on-screen icons are large and easy to read. This makes the user interface pretty simple to get around, even if you're the kind of person who doesn't read the user manual. However, once it's set up, it's pretty much just set and forget. Shove the camera onto the windscreen, run the cables up around, down the A-pillar, and plug it on in. This camera does have an optional rear camera as well, which we'll go over in the video quality section. Hey, that's this section, and we're looking at the video quality right now. This gorgeous sunny day is rendered quite nicely by this camera, with vibrant colors that pop out and are visually appealing. Brightness is handled overall quite well, although sometimes things that are bright are a little bit too bright becoming blown out. This is especially noticeable with some white cars and signs on businesses becoming just a little bit too bright and the details are lost. On a grey or overcast day there's no trouble with this and everything looks rendered more or less as good as it could be. I do think the detail is a little bit blocky in some areas. And if we're to zoom in real, real close on license plate details, I think readability is higher than most 1080p dash cams, but not quite as high as some other 2K dash cams. For the price though, wow, this is pretty dang good. And yes, I have been ignoring the obvious, the weird oddity with this camera's video quality. The rectangular proportions of the video it produces are a little bit different than normal, leaving some black bars on the side of your screen. I could go like this and just zoom in and get rid of them, but that would kind of defeat the purpose, the speciality of this dash cam being that it uses the entire image sensor instead of cropping into 16x9. In some ways this 4x3 aspect ratio throws back to the early days of videography with VHS handycams and giant tube televisions. But you know, this camera is much higher resolution than either of those things were. I don't think there's a particular advantage to doing a 4x3 versus cropping into the sensor at 16x9, mainly because all you get out of that extra top and bottom is, well, top and bottom. A little bit of sky and a little bit of dash. So while I am a fan of including more details when more details are available, in this case the benefit is a little bit more negligible. But there isn't really any drawback other than having to crop into the video if you want to share it on YouTube or social media or something that uses a 16x9 format. Actually, thinking of that, Instagram. This, this would be perfect for an Instagram post because those are more square. You would see more video without any black bars. So, there's that. While I've been rambling on here, we've been looking at night and low light footage, which is again, very, very good for the price. As with most dash cams, don't expect to capture license plates at speed. However, if you're stopped and the conditions are right, then you'll likely get the plate off of the car in front of you. It's good enough that you'll be able to figure out the make and model of the other car, but likely you will not be able to see its plates. All right, I wanted to do two quick loops with the 70 My camera, one with the backup camera plugged in and one with the rear camera unplugged just to see if there's any major difference in video quality.
I do have this very small sneaking suspicion that with the rear camera plugged in, the video quality is gonna be uh, slightly worse to say the least. But we gotta put it on the computer and test. So now we've done our one loop with the camera unplugged and now we're doing it with the camera plugged in. Now, what about that rear facing camera? For everything good I've said about the detail level, color, contrast, and frame rate of the front camera, take that and put it on its butt, because the rear camera is not very good. Details are soft and smudgy, the frame rate is quite low, and overall it's just not visually appealing. Mind you, as an add-on to the front camera, as a secondary backup source, it's totally fine for that. You get video out of it that is more or less usable. You can tell what the cars look like, and if they do get close enough into the danger zone, you'll be able to read their license plates. It's just not nearly as good as other 1080p dash cams like the Viofo A129 Duo. Now mind you, the A129 Duo's front camera doesn't have as more detail unless you get the Plus or Pro model. 2K and 4K respectively, and that camera is much more expensive, but there are a few reasons why I recommend spending the extra money versus the 70 Mai. First of all, and probably most importantly, the 70 Mai has a battery built into it. In the short term, a battery-based dash cam makes it easier to set up parking mode, but that one benefit has a big drawback in its overall longevity. Battery-based cameras consistently fail faster than capacitor-based cameras. In a climate like ours, which is Vancouver or a more northern Seattle for you Americans, temperatures are pretty average and a camera like this will probably be okay. But for those of you in Southern California, Texas, Arizona, Florida, or another state that's basically the surface of the sun, it's also not optimal in a Midwest state where it goes below freezing 50% of the year. The VOFO cameras, on the other hand, are based on a supercapacitor, which is known to function in colder and hotter temperatures with less issues. The second reason I recommend the VOFO over the A70 Mai is, if these issues do happen, VOFO has better customer support. 70 Mai, they kind of sell you the camera and then ghost you if you have issues. VOFO support at times can still be like pulling teeth, but at least they're active in the dashcam community, they respond to questions on dashcam talk for example, and if you buy a camera off of Amazon versus AliExpress, returns tend to be much, much easier. So overall conclusion on the 70 Mai A500S Pro++. It's perfectly cromulent. It turns on with the car, turns off with the car, it captures video, license plates are generally readable. The rear camera kinda sucks. But you know what? For the money, this camera is astoundingly good. Whether or not it'll actually last long term is really dependent on several factors from your environment, how you use it, if you use parking mode, if you park in the sun, outdoors, indoors, yeah. And I do think it's totally worthwhile to spend a little bit more money on a higher reliability camera. This 70 Mai A500S surprised me in a good way, and it's one of the cheapest cameras I've ever said. Yeah, I think it's alright. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Want me to review a specific camera? Give me suggestions for that too. I've got Patreon where I post a couple raw video samples from most of the cameras I review. And as a side note, don't forget to include the obligatory like, share, subscribe reminder, because if you don't do that, then people will forget.